Hey guys, welcome to my new and improved platform game tutorial for Game Maker Studio. Uh, this video is going to teach you basically how to code the fundamental aspects of a platform game. We've got moving, jumping, and a pixel perfect collision system. Um, it's all handled in about 40 lines of fairly easy to follow code, which is all fully explained. This system is super simple, it's easy to follow, and it should be the perfect starting point for any beginner coder who wants to get started making a solid 2D platform game inside of Game Maker. All you really need to know in order to be able to follow this tutorial is the very basics of using Game Maker Studio. So you should understand what a sprite is, what an object is, what a room is, and how to place and organize objects in rooms. You should also understand the very basics of how events and actions interact with one another, and if you don't understand anything about Game Maker, you should go and watch uh, my tutorial video on Game Maker Basics, and that'll bring you up to speed. Okay, assuming you're okay with that and you understand the basics of Game Maker, let me explain what I've already set up so far. I have a couple of sprites, SPR underscore wall and SPR underscore player, a couple of objects, OBJ underscore player and OBJ underscore wall, and I've scattered those objects around the room. The wall's making up our little level, and the little green box here is our player object. In our one room at the moment, we have mostly default settings. The only thing I've changed from the default settings is I've set the speed of the room to be 60, um, making the game 60 FPS instead of 30, just to make it look a little bit smoother. Uh, additionally, it's worth making sure for the purpose of this tutorial that um, your sprites are, have their origins set to be in the center like so. My sprites I'm using at the moment are both 32 by 32 rectangles, they're really quite simple, um, and so their center origin is 16 and 16. This just makes it so the object is being drawn from its center and not from the top left. And so we understand where our object is in virtual space at all times. So the first thing we're going to do is just establish a few simple variables for our player object. So go ahead and edit obj underscore player and add an event, we're going to add the create event, so when the object is made. And we're going to go to control over in our actions and drag in the little code action into our actions box. This is really the only action you ever need when uh, you're working with code. And I'm just going to give this a comment so that we know exactly what it is we're doing here. I'm going to put the words initialize variables. Whenever you're working with code, if you type two um, slashes like this, you can the text turns green and it becomes non-code. It just becomes comment text that you can write write anything into, and um, it won't like it won't affect your game in any way. A special thing in Game Maker is if you add three slashes to a line at the start of your code, and if I click the tick now, you'll see the very action itself has turned into initialize variable. Oh, initialize variables. Uh. There we go, like that. So then it even tells you in the action window exactly what uh, that comment says, and it can be useful just for organizing your code. That's just a little tip um, that I learned recently that not a lot of people know about. So the first uh, variable we want to set up is grav equals 0.2 and end that line with a semicolon. Uh, grav is going to represent gravity. Be careful not to use gravity the full word, as tempting as it might be to use the word gravity for gravity, because uh, that's a built-in function for gravity, and that's not what we're going to use. Like that, if you set a number, if you set like gravity itself to equal to, or something like that, the um, game maker will automatically use that gravity, and it will move your object for you, and it will, will handle gravity all by itself. But we don't want to do that. We want to maintain complete control and a complete understanding of everything our game is doing. So we're going to use our, our own variables and we're going to code all the effects of gravity ourselves, so that we perfectly understand everything that's going on in the game. Uh, the next variables we want to add are HSP equals zero and VSP equals zero. Um, these represent horizontal speed, HSP, and vertical speed, VSP, respectively. Um, they're set to zero at the moment because these are just going to be the containers for our current horizontal speed and our current vertical speed at any given time. So obviously at the beginning of the game they're going to start at zero. Again, don't use H speed or V speed as these are built-in functions that will have their own effects um, in the code that you won't be able to as directly see and manipulate as what we're going to create. Uh, the next variable you need is called jump speed. I'm going to set that to 7. 
um, that's just the amount of speed um, that's going to be added to our object in the up direction whenever we jump. And the last variable we need is move speed, and we're going to set that to 4, and that's going to be the amount of pixels per frame we move left and right whenever we press the left and right arrow keys. Simple as that. So that's all the variables we need to establish. So that's actually everything we need for the create event, so you can go ahead and close that now. Um, the next event we need, and well the only other event we need, is this step event. Um, as you may already know, uh, the step event actions contained in here will be carried out by the object every single frame of your game. So we'll go ahead and drag the little code icon into here, it's all we need again. And the very first thing we want um, here is we're going to get the player's input. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what buttons are currently being pressed by the player in order to tell us whether or not we need to move or whether or not we need to jump, etc. So we're going to do this by basically assigning the results of keyboard checks to variables. So every and we need to do this in the step event and not the create event because we need to be checking every frame. So at the very start of the frame, what we're going to do first of all is check say key underscore right. Um, that's just going to be the name of the variable to store uh, whether or not the right arrow key is being pressed. Um, we're going to set that to be equal to keyboard check, and you can see how that's turned a um, little like yellowy color because now game maker knows that that is a function. And um, if we open a bracket, and um, you can see at the bottom here, it's waiting for keyboard underscore check, and in brackets key, it wants to know what key we're looking for being pressed. And we're going to be looking for VK underscore right. VK underscore right. I believe VK, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe VK stands for virtual keyboard. This is just a constant that's built into Game Maker, which you can see because it's turned red, um, that uh, represents the right arrow key. Um, you can find out all of these, like if you middle click um, on anything in code, it will actually open up the help menu and it will bring you to the page related to that, um, whatever it is you just clicked on. So you can see I right clicked on this and it's brought up the keyboard input page and you can see all the different constants, VK left, VK right, up, down, enter, escape, space and so on for uh, moving in different directions. Um, a common question that come, came up in previous tutorials is how to use um, other keys like WSA and D and so on. So quickly now, say you didn't want to use the right arrow key, you could type in ORD and in brackets uh, what would right be on WSA D? It's D. So you can type that instead and ORD D, that will look for to see if the D button on your keyboard is being pressed. But for now we're just going to stick with the arrow keys. So VK underscore right. So again, just to sum up very quickly, I know I've gone over this line quite a bit, but key underscore right is just going to equal the result of checking to see whether or not our right arrow key is pressed. And that's going to return either a 1 or a 0. So keep in mind now that after this line of code is executed by the game, key underscore right is either equal to 0 or it's equal to 1. It's equal to 1 if you're pressing the button and 0 if you're not. Keep that in mind, it'll be important later. So, the next thing we want to do obviously is check the left arrow key. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently and you'll understand why a little bit later, but I'm going to set key left to be minus keyboard underscore check vk underscore left semicolon. Now the reason I've put that minus in there is you remember I told you before that this equals either naught or one. Well, that means this is either going to equal minus naught, which is of course still zero, or it's going to equal minus one. Because it's going to return the zero or one from this and it's going to make it negative by because we've got that minus there. So key right will either be one or zero and key left will either be negative one or zero. And of course the only other key left we need to check is um, our jump button, which we're going to make the space bar for now. So I'm going to say key underscore jump equals keyboard underscore check underscore pressed open bracket vk space. So we're going to check the space bar. And what press does is it means it's going to check to see if 
The button is being pressed, but it wasn't pressed at the frame before, which means if you've only just pressed the jump key. So basically meaning we can't just hold the jump key down and, and jump loads. Like, we have to just distinctly press jump every single time you want to jump, and that's the difference there. There's also functions like released, so you can tell when the button is let go of and so on, but that's not important to us right now. So now that we've got the player's inputs, um, we know what buttons are being pressed by the player at any point in time. We can now react to inputs. And that's going to be this next section of code. Now, we're going to set up a new variable here called move. And we're going to set move to be equal to key underscore left plus key underscore right in the line of the semicolon, as always. Now, if you remember before, key left will either equal minus one or zero, and key right will either equal one or zero. So you're gonna get a number here that either equals, if, say both keys are being pressed, so key left is minus one and key right is one, added together that equals zero. So doing this, we're gonna uh, basically create either a single variable that tells us what direction we want to move. Move will be minus one if just key left is being pressed. It will be plus one if just key right is being, uh, our right arrow key is being pressed. It will be zero if they're both being pressed and it will be zero if neither of them are being pressed. So now that we know that to be true, it's very, very easy for us to now say what our horizontal speed should be. So our variable from before is called uh, HSP. And HSP is gonna be equal to move, so either minus one, zero, or plus one, multiplied by, using asterisk, asterisk representing multiply when you're working with code, move speed. And you'll remember we set our move speed to be four. So now, HSP is either going to equal minus 4 if we're pressing the left arrow key, plus 4 if we're pressing the right arrow key, or 0 if we're pressing neither or both. Then the only other thing we need to do is add our gravity. So if we say... But first, the important thing with gravity is to remember that if we keep accelerating, um, with gravity, we're going to keep getting faster and faster to the point where it gets ridiculous and things will break and you're moving hundreds of pixels a frame. So we're going to first of all make sure that we haven't gone over a certain maximum with our vertical speed. So I'm going to say if vertical VSP, which is our variable for our vertical speed, is less than um, about 10, we'll say. Um, so that means if it's less than 10 pixels a frame downwards, because the higher VSP is, the faster we're moving downwards, and um, the lower it is, like the more negative it is, the more we're moving, going to be moving upwards. So if it's less than 10 pixels a frame downwards, um, VSP plus equals grav. Now you remember our gravity is 0.2. Um, and VSP will add 0 0.2 to itself. That's what plus equals does. If, as long as our gravity, our vertical speed hasn't gone over 10. So that's just a little safety check there. And then that'll add our gravity. Okay, so now we've got gravity affecting the player and we've got the left and right arrow keys um, setting up our variable for moving us. The only other thing that we need to react to input wise is our jump button. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say to the game, if uh, we're on the ground and we're pressing the, the jump button, then add our jump speed to our vertical speed, pretty much. And how we're going to do that is first of all say if, open bracket, place underscore meeting, open another bracket, x, so our current x coordinate, y, plus one, so our current y coordinate, plus one, so one pixel below our character sprite at the moment is where we're checking, obj underscore wall. 
So this is asking if the one pixel below our player object, there is a wall, meaning are we on the floor, very distinctly. I'm gonna open some curly braces after that. So if that is true and there is a floor below us, we're gonna carry out the stuff that's inside here. It's only gonna be one line of code. It's VSP equals key underscore jump multiplied by minus jump speed. Now, hopefully that's not too confusing and you can kind of work out the logic based on the same thing we did up here with H speed. So our vertical speed is gonna be equal to our key jump variable, which will be one if uh, uh, the, the space bar has just been pressed or it'll be zero if the space bar is either being held down or has is, is not, not been pressed. So it's gonna be one multiplied by negative jump speed. You remember our jump speed is seven, so when we press the jump key, our vertical speed is gonna be set to minus seven. And otherwise, um, if we're on the ground and we're not pressing the jump key, then vertical speed is gonna be set to zero, which is what we want anyway, because we're on the ground. Now, what you may have noticed is that we've set up HSP and VSP to receive the right the right numbers for moving us left and right, four pixels one way, four pixels the other, or making us jump uh, seven pixels a frame upwards, and gravity for pulling us back down again. Uh, what we haven't actually done is apply those numbers to our object in a meaningful way yet. So if we type X, and you can see it's turned red, recognizing that as uh, an important part of our object, plus equals uh, HSP, and Y plus equals VSP. It means uh, after working all this out, we're gonna add our horizontal speed to our X coordinate and add our vertical speed to our Y coordinate, which will actually move the object. However, you'll notice if we run this now, that we can move left and right, and you can see we fell at the beginning there, but there's no actual proper collision going on here. There's a kind of thing, like, we're, we're almost walking on the floor, but it's not really it's not really there yet, as you can see. We can kind of fall out and through it, and it's not really working. The reason why that is is because we don't have anything in here that's actually checking for collision, other than this one line here that's kind of setting our vertical speed to be zero if there is a floor below us, but it's not properly handling our collision in terms of how our gravity is working. So the next thing we need to do is actually set up collision. And this is something that most people who are new to game development and new to coding in general tend to get intuitively wrong. So let me just take a moment now to explain how collision works. Now, most beginners tend to see collision or how to handle collision as a little bit something like this. They imagine that their object is moving around the around the pixel space in their game and the the logic they need to uh, the logic they need to create is to say, okay, when my object is colliding with the wall like this, move it so it is no longer colliding or when I am colliding, stop moving. But they, as you can see, just by me demonstrating it and moving it around, once you're colliding, it's already too late. You've already done something that your character was not supposed to do and you've got to work about reversing it. Now it's possible to get into a situation where you, like during mid-frame, you've collided, you move your character all the way back out of the wall like this and by the time the frame actually renders, it looks like you never collided with the wall. It's possible to do that, but it's not really an intuitive way of handling collision in games, in my opinion. Um, the way I always handle collision um, in platform games, um, in really more or less any game actually, is to say, if I'm about to collide. Now, as you know, we've set up um, in our code these horizontal speed and vertical speeds um, variables that have worked out how far we're about to move in the next frame. So say, and you know we're moving about four pixels a frame uh, when we're moving left and right. So say we're here when we're three pixels away from the wall. And now if we're pressing right, all of our code has worked out that we're about to move four pixels to the right. So what we want to do instead for collision is say, are we about to hit the wall to our right? 
So as four pixels to the right of us where we're about to move, our current coordinates plus our current speed, is that area free? And the game will check here and say, oh no, it's not free. And since it's not free, what we do then is we set our horizontal speed to zero because we basically hit the wall, but we also move ourselves as close as possible to the wall because that speed still exists. That horizontal speed of four still exists. We just can't use all of it without hitting the wall. Um, so we're going to, instead of using four of it here, we would use three of it. And so we move one pixel at a time towards the wall until we can't move any further without hitting the wall and then we reduce our speed to zero. And that causes us to have a pixel perfect collision with the wall. And we do the same thing moving downwards. And that more or less is how our collision system is going to work. So thank you for bearing with me on that little detour. What we want to do is um, basically establish these collision checks just before we actually do our, uh, we actually commit to our movement. So we're going to do the horizontal one first. So let me write a comment for it. Horizontal collision, just so we know what this section is going to be about. So, as I was saying, we, first of all, we want to predict whether or not we're about to collide. So I'm going to say if, in bracket, place meeting, the same line we used before to check whether or not we were on the ground, x plus hs, no, yes, sorry, <laughs> x plus hsp, uh, comma, y, comma, obj underscore wall, close bracket. So as you can see, we're going to check to see if our current x coordinate plus the amount we're about to move horizontally, whether or not at that spot and at our current y coordinate, there is a wall. So are we about to collide horizontally? Open a pair of braces. There's going to be quite a bit more stuff in this one than what there usually, or what there was in the last one. So, if our code has made it inside these curly brackets, then we know that we're about to collide. So, what do we do when we're about to collide? We move as close as possible to the wall without actually hitting it. So, we're going to set up a while loop. A while loop will carry on happening, and it'll carry on executing a bunch of commands until the condition you give it is no longer true. This condition is going to be not represented by an exclamation mark. Exclamation mark represents not in game maker code. Place meeting x plus sign hsp close bracket comma y comma obj underscore wall. Now. As I said, this while loop will carry on happening as long as this condition happens to be true. Oh, but because we've put this not symbol here, it's kind of actually whether this condition is not true. It'll carry on going. So while place meeting x plus sign has been, now what sign does is it'll return either one or minus one depending on whether HSB is positive or negative. This is just to make sure it works whether or not we're going left or we're going right. So say we're moving to the right and we were about to hit a wall on our right. Um, HSP would be positive because we're moving right. Um, so it would be X plus one. So it would be checking if one pixel to our right, um, there is no wall, not place meeting wall. So, while we're not hitting the wall, x plus equal sign hsp. So while one pixel in the direction that we were about to move, we're not hitting a wall, move one pixel in that direction. And it will keep doing that until one pixel to the right or one pixel to the left is that wall and it's about to hit the wall. After it finds that, it'll come out of this while loop and it'll go into here. At which point, all we need to do is say HSP equals zero so that we don't carry on moving any further. And that's actually all we need for our horizontal collision code. And make sure after that, uh, we've you know after we've done all that, it's safe to, to move by however much our horizontal speed is. If we're about to hit a wall, it'll be zero, and otherwise it'll be whatever it is appropriate to whatever buttons we've pressed. So we're, we're, more than, we're more than okay to go ahead and commit to our movement. 
Now, for vertical collision, we basically need exactly the same thing. So feel free to just copy and paste that entire chunk of code down here. And we really just need to move um, all of these things to relate to our y coordinate instead of our, vert uh, our horizontal coordinate, our x coordinate even, sorry. So I'm going to remove plus H HSP off this line and add VSP instead. So y plus our current vertical speed. And while we're not uh, meeting a wall at our current x coordinate and our y coordinate plus sine VSP, uh, when while we're not meeting a wall there, increase our y coordinate by one in whichever direction, and then set our vertical speed to be zero. And that's really all there is to it. And then y plus equal VSP commits our movement. And I'll change this comment here, so that this represents our vertical collision. And that really is it. So uh, 36 lines of code in the step event, and I think it was something like five lines of code, six lines of code in the create event. That's everything you need, and I'll run the game now to demonstrate to create a working platformer. As you can see, we can jump around, we can collide with walls. It's all perfectly functional. There's no real problems with the system at all, and it's a pretty good starting point to get you going making a platform game. Hope that was useful for you guys, and I'll catch you next time.